Hello everybody. I hope all is well. Daniel. Um, I just had a I guess argument. Sorry. Out in the workshop and I hope you can hear me because I have the AC on otherwise I'd be soaking with sweat. But anyway, um, I'm in the process of making a video and the video is about how society is being programmed and has been programmed. Uh, individuals, you, me, our original programming was from our Heavenly Father and that programming has been changed so I mean you can think of it as like a computer where uh, someone puts in inputs certain rules and um, guidelines that are strictly followed to the letter and an outcome the desired outcome is then achieved well you know, that, a lot of that, a lot changed, and ever since the deception in the garden, and uh, well, let's just start from here. We're all we're all deceived, okay? We're all programmed, and our programming is not the programming originally intended for us. Now. The argument that ensued this morning with a family member who I've been slowly trying to open their eyes just blew up because it went against their programming. It went against everything that they believe since they were a small kid, since, you know, um, their indoctrination in, in schools. Schools fill your head with lies. Columbus discovered America. Well, he discovered people on America, but before he he got here, um, there's there were there's Viking rune stones uh, um, and runes engraved on stones thousands of years before Columbus. So he wasn't he didn't discover America like they they teach it, taught us in school. Um, that's just one of the lies that I could think of off the top of my head, but all the stuff that's going on right now, it's my belief that it's all fake. It's all a lie. It's not even real. If you do some research and it's getting more and more difficult because if you do like Google or any of the, the search engines because they're all controlled by the same corporations who are working hand in hand and we'll go over that the first two or three pages will all be their narrative of what they want you to to think is happening so uh, you look at those and you think whoa uh, you know that's not what he said but if you if you keep digging deeper and try different search engines you can usually get to the truth it's getting more and more difficult though they're hiding the truth so let me uh, start with what programming is and I'm sure like I said most of you know but about computer programming maybe maybe not but anyway a process trait or behavior determined by or as if by the genetic material of an organism a process trait or behavior determined by genetic material of an organ organism we are not genetically the same as we were in, as adam and eve were created their genetic their genome where our genetics have been changed by uh, food modification, weather modification, vaccination, and chemicals put into food after it's been processed. 
another definition of program the genes or sequences of DNA or RNA that are part of an organism or cell and encode or determine a process trait or behavior again just reiterating the other definition basically our genetic sequence DNA and RNA those are the two types of um, those are the two things that basically determine who you are what you look like how you smell after a workout everything and those are those were created and that that se those sequences were created by our father he is the only creator Satan is an imitator he is a copier there's only one creator A plan or system under which action may be taken toward a goal. Well, when our Heavenly Father created us, he, I think He already knew the goal. I don't know what it... I mean, I could speculate by verses what that goal was. Um, to have communication, a relationship with His creation. That was His goal in programming our DNA. Another type of program is a performance of a program broadcast on radio or television. You may or may not know my stance on television. Telev and it's not just my stance, it's actual fact. You can go look at the patents for television and it tells you right there what the purpose is. And the purpose is sending out electrical frequencies to manipulate your mind to affect your body and your thinking and thoughts it hypnotizes you when you watch television one side of your brain turns off and the other side turns on the side that turns on releases um, endorphins triggering pleasure when you're not watching television you use the other side of your mind your brain and that is critical thinking. Why would they want to turn critical thinking off? Now, what they're what they have done since childbirth, actually since conception, is rewritten our program. At first, it was mentally, emotionally. Then, as technologies evolved, they evolved for the purpose of changing us genetically. Soon after your conception, it started. You have been conjoled, distracted, and misdirected to alter your holy program. Manipulated by the powers, the very rulers of this world's darkness, the principalities of spiritual wickedness in high places have steered every boy and girl, each in a specific direction, to produce the man and woman, you and me, who thinks that by your own free will, you are the captain of your ship, but in reality, you are but one of many that can be labeled and categorized to a desired specification predetermined. Most, if not all of the population, have an altered program that changed the original plan for their lives. Your behavior, emotions, actions and reactions are predictable and when your behavior emotions actions and reactions are predictable you can be manipulated to do anything and not even realize it in the womb your pre-programmed parents expose you to their likes and dislikes 
Remember, this goes all the way back. The programming has been has advanced in its sophistication and ability to manipulate you into what they want you to do and be. In the womb, I already said, I already said that, all right. It's not a given that you will follow the same program that your parents followed, but it is common, like father, like son. After you are born of water, you are usually given a couple of toys. You pick those that appeal to you the most, not realizing that the choices you are making have been designed to awaken in you a certain something that is recognized as being common to a couple of different personality traits. Now I'm reading this, but th I wrote this. This is what I was going to overdub onto the images in the video. But I, I procrastinated, I put it off, I decided to do, do other things instead of um, what I thought what I think um, my Heavenly Father Creator w wanted me to do, what He put in my heart and in my mind and gave, gave me understanding of to relay to other people. So it's come to this. Now, influence can be conjoled into a needed or desired or whatever parameters are used into programming you. A path is chosen for you. Who's choosing this path? You think you are, but as I'll show, you are. You were led by the enemy. The enemy was there when Yahuwah created everything. When he spoke life into existence, they heard those words. I don't think they just, well, ah, forget about that. Let's go over here and play some harps. That's not what they do. They were there, they saw, they paid attention, and as much as they can do, they are. That's what magic is. Magic is the manipulation of God's creation through another means trying to achieve what only God can. But what about being created in the image of God, free to choose right from wrong? Well, that's true. But you have to know you are being deceived before you can try to end the deception. And they tell us, in so many ways, it's almost laughable. We'll get to that later too. Now, certainly not every kid who likes a particular toy or cartoon character turns out the same, but the commonalities are more prevalent than you might think. Around the time you enter high school, you've already become friends with kids that are similar to yourself. The few that are not quickly fall away from your group into other groups of kids more like they are. And there's different groups, remember? Jocks, nerds, stoners, preppies, geeks, the list goes on. I'm not poking fun or calling the names, but that's how we uh, that's how I remember the different groups of kids in high school, the different cliques. And there was more. Now, there's some people, there are some that fit in with nearly every group and move around those groups and are comfortable in all those groups and all those different groups accept that person into their group even though they don't look the same. A nonconformist, free spirit, but... It's just another program. We all know that not every jock in high school becomes a professional athlete, and not every stoner becomes a homeless drug addict. Every computer geek doesn't become Bill Gates, thankfully. But that's not what the programming is about. Now, in the fourth book of James, it's written, Ye ask and receive not, because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts you ask for stuff because you desire it you, th you ask what you want is that what you want or is that what the devil wants you to want he wants you to think that's what you want that's what you need
you receive not because what you ask for are desires the strength to overcome an addiction when you already have the power to overcome that addiction you ask for healing when your sickness is a direct cause of your environment and self-produced stress levels this thing about wearing a mask wearing a mask think about what you breathe in oxygen what do you breathe out carbon dioxide carbon dioxide it's a poison you breathe it out now if you have your mouth covered and your nose covered and you're breathing out carbon dioxide and breathing in carbon dioxide and out and in and out that raises stress levels you're walking around looking at people I go through the store and I see these people with masks on and they make sure which direction I'm going so they can go the other way go around and stop and turn real fast because I'm right there that's fear and anxiety that is not of our father now wearing a mask does other things too um nah hopefully I'll remember in a minute <laughs> I apologize now let's see I had never considered the long term effect of eating whatever I wanted whenever I was just sober enough to make it, make it or order it now I'm diabetic and have all the benefits of it but I don't stress about it I've heard about people reversing their diabetic condition but uh, apparently I don't see it as serious as I'm sure it is or I should see it so I deal with it in my own ways but my point is you and I chose a specific direction at some point in our lives and your life as it is now is the direct result of your choices is it was I programmed to do or did I choose the program to drink alcohol every day consume large quantities of sugary filled fatty foods because they tasted good a falsity of thought in that you thought you were in control like a rich person who sits in the large house eating a $300 breakfast prepared by the professional trainers personal chef thinking they're in control of their life they just chose differently or were set on a different path of choosing one turn of the stock market are not thoroughly chewing that fancy breakfast and it's over right people say oh hey let's go uh, do this tomorrow let's go take our goods into this city and sell and make money and profit who are you to say you have a tomorrow? You don't know if tomorrow exists for you. Thankful for every day. But everyone does become exactly what they were predetermined to become. Controlled without feeling like you are. Predetermined by your earthly programmer. Are you of what... Of course I had a phone call from a recording about my car insurance that I don't have or not car insurance but uh, extended warranty is expiring which it's not <clears throat> are you aware that less than six corporations own all American media outlets radio newspaper movies billboards television magazines search engines 
to have an image of that here. I don't know if I can. It's probably not legible or readable. The illusion of choice. I'll read it to you though. In 1983, 90% of American media was owned by 50 companies. In 2011, that's why I said less than six because I can't find any current information on this. Um, it was owned by six in 2011. And then it, it names the six are GE, News Corp, Disney, Viacom, Time Warner, and CBS. And it lists some of the media outlets that they owned. Um, I won't get into that part. Switch back over here. All right. All the information you receive is carefully tailored to make you think, act, feel, and buy what they are selling. From what movie star you worship to that to what religion you worship to the car you drive what songs make you cry and the television programs that make you feel whatever they want all of them carefully manipulated ornately orchestrated and woven together like a ritual spell Hollywood Wood from a holly tree. Wood from a holly tree is used in witchcraft to make their little wands. Look it up. Broadcasting, casting a spell, broadly casting a spell through a device that manipulates your emotions and can actually cause physical pain. Did you know that when they make movies, they do things in a certain way repeatedly, like a spell? And I can't—I don't have the links for this right now, but in the music industry, you can look up. Uh, oh, what's her name? There's a few different artists who admit to selling their soul or signing a contract to become this famous musical performer Bob Dylan um, references that and some of them you know it's like oh yeah I sold my soul so I could be a rock star they make it sound like a joke but it's no joke record producers have to be um, how would you put it they're witches. They have to um, uh, belong to a coven and they have to attend meetings. And like I said, I don't have the links. I apologize, but I'm not making it up. Where did I leave off here? The products you love, the chemical laden food you crave, the injected with who knows what animals they feed us all designed to make sure you are addicted happy and sick not just the the stuff that they put into the food the vaccination that they the uh, hormones that they give the animals the conditions the animals live in the way they're killed increased stress levels in these animals so much so that they have to give them antibodies, vaccinate, the, uh, I don't know, not vaccinate, antibodies and fill them with hormones because their stress levels are so high that it changes their flesh, changes their texture and their meat. <coughs> I know, 
I eat it too. But think about this. When you get sick, say you get a cold, a runny nose, what is that doing? What is a runny nose doing? It's ejecting toxins from your sinus cavity and your mucous membrane. A cough to eject toxins from your lungs and respiratory system. A fever to drive those toxins from your blood. It's your body's way of healing itself. But what does your doctor do? Your doctor prescribes you a cough suppressant something to dry up that runny nose and a fever reducer so your body is trying to heal itself and the doctor gives you stuff to stop it why do we take drugs that stop the body's natural remedy for its own sickness well it seems to work for me so I'll just keep taking them lots of things work when you're sick or you have an issue. Something called confirmation bias. We change the focus from being sick to getting better. That works. Do that. Learning expectations. You feel better. Last time I was hungover, I felt better when I took a drink. Or Last time I was sick, I felt better when I, I had a headache and I took some ibuprofen. That made me feel better. So it should work again, right? Logical. Have you ever heard of the placebo effect? Say you go to the doctor, doctor something up for you, and he gives you a pill, says this will take care of you, you go home, you take it, and you get better. But you didn't know he gave you a sugar pill. Just nothing. What made you better? Well, part of it is that learning expectation. Because, you know, hey, last time he gave me a pill, I got better. Well, that placebo, that sugar pill, put into your mind, this is going to make you better. So you started getting better. It's less effective on smoking, dementia, depression, obesity and hypertension, insomnia and anxiety. But those seven human issues are a result of focused, oppressive, individualizing programming. Isolation programs. When you have no one to talk to, or more importantly, no one who sympathizes with you. Recovering from these programs is difficult. Because even if you think that pill is going to make you better, you have no one to, re to relate to or that will relate with you. Take dementia. When you're just thinking all kinds of things are happening, people don't relate to that. They just think you're crazy. I just heard something outside. Uh, um, depression. No one wants to admit they're depressed. No one wants to just share their depression with someone else because it's an oppression as well. Obesity. You see a big old fat guy? You don't want to go up and say, hey man, you need to eat less. He knows he needs to eat less. No one can relate or wants to relate. Hypertension, insomnia, anxiety. Right, this will be a no edit video. It was nothing, just the dog. Um, there's also been studies done that when you have a physician that talks to you about your issues, it seems like they care that you recover faster when you have a uh, say you have back problems and you're getting therapy that therapist seems to be relating to your problems you recover those people recover faster than the ones who were given uh, just you know like stiff collar guy you see someone in pain 
and you want to help because maybe you've experienced similar pain. I'm sure most of you have felt nausea or have a fear like not being able to breathe. Those are easily relatable things. The human condition is a social one and we all enjoy being able to relate to one another. The word placebo is a Latin word and it stands it means I shall please I thought that was interesting your mind is powerful powerful enough to cure the body or make it sick make you famous rich or a king that's why it's controlled from the moment you are conceived everybody has the power to change who they are and who they become in this world change their programming most never realize it or if they do they don't know how to do anything about it why not it's not taught to us our parents didn't know it those are that you know probably the main teacher in your life besides the Holy Spirit are your parents not that uh, to teach you things that are valuable anyway not school school is for your as part of your programming and part of control when you enter college all of a sudden you get these uh, applications for credit cards to keep you in debt The education camps called school pump lies into your brain then send you off to work. Part of the program nearly every person on the planet follows. You work to earn money, which is taxed. Well, I got real close to the camera there all of a sudden. You earn money to pay rent on your house, which is taxed. Your car payment, taxed. So you can get to work. Who are you really working for? Hold on. All right. I'm using my old phone to record this because the microphone on this phone only works on speaker and it's really bad. And this old phone um, the, we plug the, the charger in it has to be in a certain position or it doesn't charge and I noticed that it dropped down to I'm at 15% but I'll wrap this up this whole the, the reason the argument happened today was because someone's programming was challenged and they didn't they couldn't accept that at that at that moment so the reaction was defensive and um, like they, they, they accused me of uh, oh I'm so smart you're so smart it's not about being smart it's about being and, I, and my response was let's well, have an, at least have an open mind I was trying to show show them a video about um, they because they, they I said okay my bottom line this whole thing is not real there are not thousands of people dying it started with me showing it then I showed a chart um, from a website uh, and uh, on the website it says it gives you it's a website about numbers and it, it, it says it gives you the number of people that died between January and I think it was March of uh, this year, um, 49,000 or 42,000 from this supposed virus, which if you look at viruses, they're not even real. It's a theory, like the theory of evolution. It's not proven. It's a theory. Viruses are a theory. <clears throat> I don't want to get sidetracked. Um, so the, the numbers were 42,000 or something. And 
the numbers for the regular flu, 140 some thousand. And they said, well, what's your point? People are still dying, right? I said, okay, well, even if it's true that people are dying, hold on here. Even if it's true people are dying, look at the numbers. It's like 42,000 compared to a hundred and it was less than a third of people that have died from the regular flu. I said, well, I haven't even heard anything about the regular flu. Of course not. They want you to focus on this. This is the thing that's killing everybody, right? Even if it was, how many, I said, how many times have I had the flu in my lifetime? I think three or four. I'll take my chances of something that is getting people sick and supposedly killing them at less than a third of the rate. I'll take my chances of getting that strain of the flu or whatever they're calling it because I don't think it's just not real. What about the semi trucks that are backed up to um, uh, mortuaries waiting to be loaded up with bodies so they can drive away? Really, 18 wheelers backed up to a, <coughs> a mortuary? three of them waiting to be loaded it's a lot of bodies in a little mortuary it doesn't make sense either and then it, then it just escalated to I, I, I said okay well let me I said watch a video it's a four minute video about vaccinations very reluctantly they started to watch the video and it's an interview of someone who is being um, indicted on federal charges and they're reading statements and they're asking him to respond yes or no true or false they already have the information they have all the facts they want to see what he's going to say about what he did and you've seen that video there's three sections in that video it starts off with bill gates the video I, I posted, Bill Gates talking about uh, Trump looking into vaccinations and the harm they do. And he's, Bill Gates is like, no, no, you shouldn't do that. He'll, that's, that'll, nothing good will come of that. And then it goes into the interview. And this doctor is, uh, the guy says, is it true that you harvested these body parts from abortion, babe, aborted fetuses? Yes, yes, yes. And that really just sent that person over the edge that was I was have, trying to have watched the video well what's the point of all this well the point is that person was using fetal matter aborted fetal, fetal matter from um, Planned Parenthood facilities who are funded by the Bill and, Gate, Bill and Linda Gates Foundation or companies that are owned uh, um, organizations that are owned and backed by Bill and Linda Gates Foundation and he was creating vaccines and he was taking these what they're calling vaccines to countries in South America and the women uh, people who were given these vaccines as a part of some sickness that was probably created by the same people so they would have a reason to give them the vaccines those people that were given the vaccines became sick died um, horrible deaths became um, their their uh, offspring were messed up they uh, in Africa they couldn't have kids look through my videos it's it's, it's a short video too um, I don't remember what it's called but Bill Gates is the first interview on there. Um, what does that have to do with anything? They're not making a vaccine anymore. And I said, they're not making a vaccine for this anymore? No, they're not making a vaccine anymore. I said, well, they're, 
how are they going to stop it from spreading then? You know, they, they've got to put a stop to it. Well, I said, so they're, they're still making a vaccine. It's just going to take a while, they're saying, right? Well, maybe down later down the road, they'll come out with a vaccine or something. They're still working on a vaccine. They probably already have what they, they're going to give us as a vaccine. And it's not a cure for some virus that isn't real. So that was, that's my point. Do not hold so hard to your programming. What they want you to think. Once everyone, once the country believes everything that the news outlets tell them is truth, then it's over. I'm not saying have an open mind to everything, but at least be willing to put your beliefs to the side on a shelf for a moment, look at something, see if it rings true to you, and if it does, good, you know, great. But still try to seek other sources to corroborate this. And if you think, that's ah, still BS. All right, well, would it hurt to at least take some time out since no one's working right now anyway to look into it yourself? To see if there's any thing that would make this person who is showing you this believe it's true? I mean, are they just crazy? Are they ignorant and stupid? They believe in everything, anything? If you can, if, if someone presents you with something and you don't believe it's true, look into at least the people that are involved in what they're showing you. At least look up the name of the person being interviewed and, and see what relation they have to other people like Dr. Fauci and Bill Gates, our buddy buddy. Most people don't know that. The World Health Organization, their number one contributor of money is the United States. Guess who's number two? Billy Gates and Bill and Linda Gates Foundation. Now, if you're an organization that receives their funding, the majority of their funding, or close to I, agree. I think Bill Gates gives like $2 million less than the United States. And there's probably some reason for that. <laughs> if that person comes to you, to the board, and presents something as fact, fact by research done through other organizations that he has, and says this is the new narrative or this is the way we're going to go, what, do you, what are, are they going to say? No. Now that's the end of them. They would probably would even question anything. He's like, okay, boss. <coughs> Excuse me. Actually, I'm going to end it right there. I will put um, some pictures and videos, images, whatever. Uh, at the end of this, they're just not going to be in any order. Um, I'm not going to put any links. I feel like I need to get this video up as soon as possible. I love every one of you because you love God. And God loves you. Our Father, Creator in Heaven. That's who I'm talking about. Yahuwah, whose only son, Yahushua, died for our sins. Died so our sins can be forgiven is what that means. God has great. God has grace. Right now is the period of grace. He is willing to overlook, well, he's willing to forgive your sins if you accept his son as your savior and the fact that he died so your sins can be forgiven. Doesn't mean you can go around sinning all nilly willy. No. 
those who follow the commandments of our Father, He holds close. Your name may be written in the book of life. That means if your name is written in the book of life, you were, you, <clears throat> I can pretty much guarantee you your name's written in the book of life right now. But that doesn't mean it can't be erased. If you turn your back on the offer of salvation or the knowledge of salvation and continue in your sinful ways, it can be erased. Now, does it mean that Oh, you know, I gotta try. Yeah, you gotta try, but it doesn't mean that you're not gonna sin again. It just means that take someone who's a, a habitual liar, lie, 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 lie for no reason. At, you accept the Holy Spirit. You accept Christ as your Savior. You turn from those ways you try to stop lying now it doesn't mean you're not going to lot sometimes a lie is going to slip or you know whatever the situation is I, I'm not here to say it's not my place to say but you stop the habitualness you stop sinning the same sins over and over and over again you break the habit now in my own personal experience with my one my major sin that is a habitual sin in my life some people call it backsliding, but I, I don't like to call it backsliding, okay? You, my habitual sin, I can go for long periods of time and not do it. The thought might come into my mind, but if I don't act on that thought, if I reject it and claim, claim Christ as my power of rejection, then I haven't sinned. Just because the sin comes into your thoughts doesn't mean you've sinned. When you act upon that sin, when you fulfill the desire of that sin, that is the sin. So, reject those thoughts. Reject that voice of the devil in your head, whispering in your ear, putting that thought in your mind, hoping you act upon it and sin. A thought is not a sin. Now, if your if your sin is some kind of thought sin, then that's different. But I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. I can go a long time without it, right? And then, you know, the thoughts come, and I reject. I reject. Next thing I know, I'm in the middle of my sin. I don't even know how I got there. Obviously, I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, you know, holding my father's hand. I wasn't turning to him. I was in the world, most likely. That's how you figure out. That, that's how you become stronger. When you figure out, when I can figure out, I, I've got some of them nailed down. I know when, hey, when this happens or when this thought happens, I'm in this situation, I better be on the lookout because I feel a sin coming. And I pay extra attention, read the Bible more, pray more. That's how you see his, his attacks coming. And that's how you defeat them. But... He's a wily beast. And uh, the wiles of the devil, he walks around watching, looking for the straight line of attack. Look, look, up, look up that verse, um, Ephesians 6, um, 13, 14, around there, around, about the armor of God, the wiles of the devil. Look that word up, wiles, W-I-L-E-S. It'll give you an understanding of how he attacks. All right, guys. Be good.
New World Order. A New World Order can emerge.